This is from Karishma. She says, what is the best way to find out if a man has done some self-growth work? Shall I just ask him what personal development work you have done? Great question, Karishma. I love it. Um, yeah, you can ask, but also just, you know, you can ask specifically, like, have you done any, you know, introspection uh, or also just kind of ask questions, uh, finding out uh, about their history as them growing up. What kind of challenges might have they faced as a younger person and have, you know, where are they now? Have they, you know, done any introspection? Have they done any kind of shifts and transformation from maybe any challenges that they've gone through? Uh, could have been, you know, what's your, and you could ask like this, what's your relationship like with your parents? Was it always that way? You know, do you ever have any challenges? How about with your siblings? Things like this. What, you know, have you had any fears or doubts? Were you shy as a kid? Were you, you know, completely gregarious? And then you realize, oh, I needed to be more uh, listening than just so outward. Those, again, uh, like kind of Ken was saying earlier, like ask direct questions. You'll get, you'll get direct responses. So mm -hmm. you can ask directly or kind of in and about to get to know their history. Yeah, you know, and this is an interesting one, too, because a lot of the clients that I've worked with, and I'm sure that many, that several of you have worked with, have done a fair amount of self-development work over the years. And I don't know if for all men, that's as much of a thing. I know there are men out there that are involved in it for sure. But I will say some of my clients have invited men that they're dating to kind of participate in these kinds of things. And it's been a real bonding opportunity an experiential uh, thing for them that has brought them a lot closer. So if a man is open to that, even if he hasn't done a lot of that on a formal basis previously, maybe you don't want to just, you know, write him off. That's all I'm saying. Just yeah. adding that. Yeah, definitely. And I would say too, for guys who haven't done the, you know, the self-help passage uh, or that kind of thing, that doesn't mean that they haven't, uh, looked and explored and done growth in themselves. So watch the lingo um, because you might find that uh, you don't necessarily have to use the self-help kind of lingo. Just ask how have you transformed or what's happened, what's changed. And I, and I will say that, um, you know, being involved in some men's groups, um, that men, uh, as, as again, at traditional guys, they love that opportunity to get together with other guys to, to finally, they feel like someone's listening to them. So take that, you know, in that sense, Karishma, you know, in, in, invoke um, your desire and intention to ask questions, to really get to know him. And that's going to be an incredible attractant because whether he's done the, this kind of work or not, there's probably a part of him who wants to, get shared and, and share his experience and, and care for that. So it's a great, great question. Yeah, thank you so much, Gary. All right, Ken, you're up. This is from Wendy and she says, how do you screen men who are truly emotionally available and separate them from the men who say or even think they are emotionally available? Before you answer this, Ken, I just wanna say, I. Uh, and this is a second part to the question, and maybe all of you have an opinion on this. I kind of think this emotionally unavailable term right now is kind of overused. Like, uh, it's just a thought. So answer the question, and we can, <laughs> we can explore that, too. <laughs> okay, great. So, Wendy, this is maybe the number one question in America right now um, from women about men. Mm -hmm. And... Obviously, the biggest one is watch what he does, not what he says. It's more about who he is, how he shows up, and is he, is he available? Is he open? Is he communicative? Is he nurturing? If he's like, yeah, I've done all this stuff, and you want that, so then you dismiss the fact that he's actually behaving poorly. And this is what we do. We're like, oh, but he's so great and everything else, but he's kind of shit off, but I'll just act like that's not there because I want it to be this way. It's really clear if a man's emotionally unavailable or not. Now, here's the trick. It's very easy to make up that story. Like Michelle said, 
The two biggest ones right now, in my opinion, are emotionally unavailable and he's a narcissist. Yep. Ding, ding. Blanket comments to just dismiss any guys to why you shouldn't be around him. First of all, narcissism is a clinical condition. Unless he's been clinically diagnosed as a narcissist, you don't get to decide that. So he's not a narcissist just because he thinks of himself, just because he tells you what he needs and doesn't ask what you need. That doesn't make him a narcissist. So I wanted to put that out there. Same thing with emotionally unavailable. Mm -hmm. You want to pay attention to how he's showing up. It's so easy to make up the story because otherwise he's really great, but he's kind of doesn't, you know, show any emotion or he won't open up to me. But I really want this to work. So I'm going to act like it's not there. And then I'll act like I'm surprised when six months later, I admit to myself that I was right the first time that he was emotionally unavailable. It happens a lot. And it's because of our desire to be in partnership. So my advice is really pay attention to what's showing up. It's, it's interesting because um, Carrie's comment about, and, and the question he was answering about self-help, right? Has they done self-development? I would venture to say that 99% of you really don't care if he's done self-development. You want to know what are the qualities you're looking for that represent that to you, and then look for that. He can tell you he's read 27 books. It doesn't mean he lives it. It doesn't mean he applies any of it. So the better question to ask is not has he done self-development. For you, be going, what am I looking for? What are those qualities? So it's the same thing with emotionally available. What are the qualities I'm looking for? Because I could ask a dozen women, and they would all have different answers as to what emotionally available is. So you need to identify it for yourself. What's that? What am I looking for? What are the qualities? What are the behaviors? What are the characteristics? And then you check in, not is he or isn't he this, but how is he being that? Be open to possibilities because he could be doing it in a way you never even thought about. And you have, wow, he's really open like this. I never even thought about that, but that's a really cool way of being open. I like that. It opens the possibilities because really all you care about is that quality. It's not about did he do this work or is he into this box that I've just created saying this is what emotionally available looks like. So check in for yourself ahead of time. What are the qualities I'm looking for in a partner? How do I want to feel when I'm with them? That's really the payoff because Mr. Right is not a person. It's a feeling. It's how you feel when you're with that person. He could check every other box, be the most handsome man in the world, be worth millions of dollars, want to fly you around the world and wine and dine you, and you feel uncomfortable with him the whole time. Doesn't matter. Now, you cannot, like, dismiss that. I actually worked with a woman who was married to an A-list guy in Hollywood, all this stuff, and she was literally breaking down. Her health was going to hell because it was so out of alignment with her. But she had this vision since she was a little girl that she was going to marry an actor. And she did. And it literally trashed her life because she wasn't paying attention to the feelings, the emotions that were necessary there. So when you're looking at this, you really want to look at the qualities. It's not about some title of emotionally available or self-help. It's about how does he show up? How do you feel in his presence? Yeah, that was really well said, Ken. And I just want to say also, I think we have to be really careful about making hasty judgments like first dates and second dates, because I really think you need to see how someone shows up over a period of time. Patterns and and getting to know someone is what really tells you who they are. And I think if they talk about themselves nonstop on a first date, that doesn't mean they're a narcissist. That might mean they're really nervous. Just yeah. saying. Yeah. So we have to be careful about the hasty judgments. Okay, Dave, you ready to go? That one or another question? Because I have a thought on that too. Okay, share your thought and then I have a new question for you. Quick thought. Um, that was a great answer, Ken. The, the other thing I'd add to it, like the presupposition underneath of that question is, um, how do I make sure that this doesn't happen again? How do I make sure that I don't uh, run in or again, how do I make sure I don't run into an unavailable man? And, and then so underneath of that, I suspect it's not the first time. And so my question that I usually turn it around is, if that's happening once, twice, three times, four times, the question then has to become, where might you be unavailable? So that's a really good turnaround because it's, a lot of times a lot of people don't realize you're co-creating every single relationship that you ever have. You're bringing at least 50% to it. They are too. So if this is something that continues to show up, it's something for you to look into as well. Um, 
not just look for it in other people. I just wrote a book about that. So um, patterns are really important. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. I'm and sorry, thank you, Ken. <laughs> All right. So, Dave, I have a new question for you. Okay. This is one we get a lot. Um, this is from Luana. She says, what is up with pain? I've gotten good and bad reactions from both offering to pay and not. Oh my gosh. Yes. We have had this one come up a bunch of times. <laughs> yeah. One of the things I actually wrote a blog on this a long time ago and I said, you know, um, the idea is basically paying is a, is a symbol or a, a, a representation that a man can, can, um, protect and provide for you. Paying for a meal is literally the act of providing for you. And so one of the ways that I like to do it is like, you don't have to assume that everyone knows that because they don't. So I wrote this blog and I said, basically you could say, I read this blog mm -hmm. one. You could say, if, if you finished dinner and the bill is still sitting there, no one's reached for it. You can actually ask the question, what did you want to do about the bill? And they can figure out something or, you know, offer something or say, Oh, I've got it. Don't worry about it. Or, you know, we can split it or whatever. And in a, a subtle way to educate at the same time, if they're not aware and say, you know, I always like to ask and I don't want to assume. I read this blog one time, my blog, and it said um, that's a way that men like to um, provide for, you know, demonstrate their ability to provide. And I realized that if I ever take that ability away from them that that's really not fair i take away their ability to provide so i was like to ask about that and so what we've done is we've educated them given them the opportunity and then they can take it back and decide to do it but i think it's kind of stealth because some people aren't aware some people might not think of it that way so i think it's just a great way to kind of be okay with whatever happens but you just kind of put it out there and you you might just educate someone along the way and get them to uh, think about it in a different way Mm, I like that. Thank you. That's great. It's a lot more um, graceful than like trying to pull out the wallet without trying to pull out the wallet <laughs> right. out of your purse as a woman. Like, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I? So it, I, I think what I also like is that it's elegant and it kind of assumes the best about people. And I, I think that's why I kind of liked it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, very, very nicely done.